laborers are few. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And what God literally does for those that are laborers, for those that have a mind and a heart to serve Him, and a mind and a heart uh, to manifest His will, there is a level of word that is directed at your life and towards your life that is not common. It's a heightened word. It's a word that elevates you above the times. It's a word that elevates you above the seasons. It's a word that elevates you above the things that happen in this earth realm. Whenever your heart and whenever your mind is to manifest the will of God, it's like God places you in a protected zone. A zone of uh, peace, a zone of prosperity, a zone that is not contingent on the things that happen in this earth realm. When Jesus begins to t teach uh, his disciples concerning the harvest, it was at a time where a, a section of them, his disciples, were being caught up uh, by their own hunger, their own desires, their own lusts, the things that they want to do. And there must come another uh, sensitivity to the will of God in your life where you are willing to put down your ambition and your agenda. See, because we're in a time where everyone wants to do it their way. They want to uh, fulfill their own goals. We've got our five-year plan. We've got a 10-year plan. We've got a 15-year plan. All right, and everything that we do, our time, our energy, our effort is placed towards the goals that we have in the natural. But don't you know there's a greater goal that God wants to wake your heart up to and that goal is called the will of God. Amen. That goal is called the desire of God because you've been created for more than a house. We've said that a couple of weeks ago. You've been created for more than a couple of hundred thousand dollars in your bank account. We thank God for that, don't we? But you have been created more than just to uh, grovel on the low level because financial prosperity is the lowest level of manifestation. That's the lowest level. The Bible says even the unjust can get wealth. Praise the Lamb of God. But the, the higher realm of the glory of God is not wealth and riches. It is the place of God where God uses you as the channel to get His will in the earth. And whenever you set your goal higher, the things that are lower automatically comes up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God doesn't want you to have to come down to get it. And there are many people in the body of Christ that are coming down to get it. Glory to God. That's one of the things that got Eve and got Adam in the garden. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that Eve is minding her business and here comes the serpent. Here comes something that is groveling. That is on a creeping level. Something that was under her dominion. How do you know it was under her dominion? Because in Genesis 1, 26-28, the Bible begins to tell us that God gave man dominion over the fish of the sea. We talked about that. Over the fowl of the air. And over what? Every creeping thing. The creep of the earth. So by spiritual, the spiritual aspects, Eve had no business communicating with something she had dominion over. Praise the Lamb of God. When she saw the serpent come, what Eve needed to do was, Eve needed, glory to God, to take her dominion over that and keep her communication higher. Because when she kept, if she had kept her communication higher, then she would have been able to ascend. Praise the Lamb of God. A sin over what? A sin over the thinking that the enemy was trying to plant in her mind. You've got to come down to get this. You've got to come down to receive this from God. You've got to come down. You've got to do what you've got to do to make it happen for you. you, you you're a single parent. You're a man. you got to take care of your house. You've got to come down to get that. Go to God. And the more you come down, the more and more the presence of God begins to leave your life because because God needs people who are willing to laboriously stay up, glory to God, where He is. 
at the cost of some things. At the cost, Paul says in Philippians, of all things. He said, I count all things but dung, waste, that I might do what? Win Christ. There is a process of shedding. That we go through in the spirit realm, in the natural realm, where the more you shed off the natural, the more you shed off your own ambition, your will, the, the, the will of your flesh, the more and more, Paul says, Christ is renewed in us day by day. And most of us can ascend in that higher realm because our flesh isn't dead enough. Our will, our ambition isn't dead enough. Our goals in the natural, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's not good to have goals, but whenever you do have a goal, you better understand you also have a God. Praise God. And God knows how to remanufacture your goals into what His will is. Glory to God. God knows how to let your life go through a process, glory to God, that at the end of that process, you're saying, I yield, I yield. Glory to God. I'm tired of going through all of these things and seasons. Glory to God of difficulty knowing that the way of the transgressor is hard. It is hard to have a call on your life and not obey it. It is hard to have an assignment by God, chosen by God to do something and then live lower than what your call is. It's hard. It is hard. And you'll see temporary seasons of blessings. You'll see temporary seasons of increase. But then you'll come to a hard stop like God told Paul. Where God told Paul, it's hard to kick against the prick. It is hard to keep doing things your way when God has a chosenness over your life. How many know that you're chosen? Glory to God. And guess what? Your chosenness is far greater than even what you can see right now. The closer and closer you get to God, the closer and closer you get to your chosenness, the closer and closer you get to the assignment that God has for your life, the more and more you're able to resemble the image of Christ in every place. The image of Christ in your finances, the image of Christ in your body, the image of Christ in your mind, the image of Christ in your family. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Glory to God. So your ambition has to begin to yield now. It has to begin to come into another level of submission. Another level of yes. Another level of availability. Another level of dependence on God. You know I talk to God all the time. And you would think I was an unsaved man the way I talk to God. God you, praise God. Because you know sometimes we're, too sa we're so saved that we lose our dependence on God. We lose our, our childlike nature before God. We lose the ability to say, God, I need you. I know nothing. I, I, I have no power outside of you. If you are not with me, I'm going to destroy myself. If you are not with me, if your wisdom isn't with me, I'll continue making the wrong directions. We get too heady with God sometimes. And whenever we get too high-minded with God, God will let your, see, your life go through a season of change until you finally submit to God. Until you finally, like Isaiah, where Isaiah uh, uh, finds himself beholding the image of God at the time where Uzziah died in Isaiah chapter 6. Glory to God, Isaiah saw a realm of death. He saw a realm of expiration and through his realm, a seeing of a realm of expiration, he now sees himself. Glory to God. Something must die in us. Our flesh, our ambition, our natural will must die in order for us to see Christ properly and not only see Christ properly, but see ourselves through Christ properly. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise God. Can I talk to you for a moment? That's why sometimes we don't have a level of confidence in the spirit. We don't know what we can do through Christ. We don't know what we can do, do through God because there's a level of flesh in us that's stronger than the measure of spirit within us. That's why the flesh has to die. The flesh has to go on the altar. The flesh has to be submitted to the image of Christ. And when you see Christ clearly... You'll, you'll be like Isaiah when the Lord says, who shall go for us? Whom shall we send? Isaiah said, Lord, send me. The reason why some of us aren't going and walking in our chosenness is because something in us has not died to the will of God. 
There's a level of activity that has not died to the will of God yet. That's why your flesh is able to buck up against the voice of God. That's why God can wake you up in the middle of the night and you don't get up to pray. Or you don't get up in His Word. Or you don't get up to talk to Him. There's a level of either weakness in your flesh or a level of strength in your flesh that is bucking up against the will of God. Because whenever you are absolutely submitted to the measure and the power of God in your life, your answer is always yes. Sometimes you're not going to know how. Praise the Lamb of God. Sometimes you're not going to know when. Sometimes you're not going to feel like you have what you need. Glory to God. In order to do the will of God. Glory to God. How do we know that? Because when the angel comes to Mary and God begins to tell Mary concerning what's going to come out of her, the first thing she says is, how shall this thing be? Seeing I know not a man. And what does the angel say? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to come on you. There has to come, precious people, another reliance in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask you a question. Have you received since you believed? Amen. And I'm not just talking about tongues. I'm talking about the measure of the Spirit that causes your life to be fruitful. Have you received? And I'm not talking about what you received 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Glory to God. There should be new baptisms of the Spirit happening in your life. Glory to God. The Bible says, and they shall speak with new tongues. Glory to God. There should be free in fillings of the Spirit of God within you. Why? Because as time progresses, the wisdom of God through the Spirit has to increase in your life. Glory to God, you should not be going off of the wisdom of the Spirit that you received 25 years ago. Praise God. There is a progressive measure of the Spirit of God that God's trying to get us to, but we're going to have to submit to God. What would it hurt you to tell God yes? What would it hurt you to submit to God? You know what's going to hurt? It's going to hurt your flesh and the things that build up your flesh. Praise the Lamb of God. It's going to be quiet for a minute, but we're going to talk glory to God loud in just a minute. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise God. What The reason why we don't submit, glory to God, is because there's something that is being reinforced within our flesh. There are people that are around us that are reinforcing our bondage. There are people around us that are reinforcing what our flesh wants, our flesh desires. Well, I won't go to church tonight. Glory, it's cold outside. I'll just stay in. You can watch it on Facebook Live. It's the same word. See, that's a reinforcement of your flesh. Praise the Lamb of God. Well, I wouldn't pay my tithes or my offerings, glory to God. Times are hard. See, that's a reinforcement of your flesh. The devil knows how to send people and things around you, glory to God, to cushion your disobedience. Praise the Lamb of God. Do you remember when, when that damsel that had the spirit of divination was following Paul? And she was saying the right things, but it was through the wrong spirit. Praise God. You've got to watch people that are saying good things, but you can tell in the spirit something is off. Because sometimes the devil wants to throw you, glory to God, a mirage by good words when it's the wrong spirit behind it. Praise the Lamb of God. She was saying good things, but Paul recognized that that was a spirit that was working in her. Paul cast that spirit out of her, and the Bible says, now watch this, that there were rulers of that city that pimped her out, that sold her so that she can tell fortune tellers. She was a psychic to the people that would come in the town and they would use her to make them money. Glory to God. And when Paul cast that spirit out of her, the Bible says the people that made money off of her, glory to God, gets mad at Paul for freeing her. Praise the Lamb of God. Now they are seeking to hurt Paul, glory to God, because Paul got her free. See, the devil will always put people around you, glory to God, to use you for their benefit because they know when you get free, glory to God, their, 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 their livelihood is over. Their livelihood is over. Their, their, their money is over. The way they're using you is over. 
Praise the Lamb of God. The way they're abusing you is over. Praise God. So what we have to strive to do now, we have to strive to submit to God. Because when we submit to God, God knows the attachments that are, that are attached to us that is slowing our assignment down. What God is trying to do, people of God, God is trying to put your assignment on fast forward. Glory to God. I said God wants to accelerate his call on your life like he did so on the road to Damascus. God fast forwarded Saul's call above that which his disciples were able to do at that time. They had to walk with Jesus for three years. They had to, they had to been taught by the Lord for those years. They had to, you know, sleep with the Lord or go to God on the ground sometimes. He tells them, fox have holes, the birds of the air have nests, the son of man has no way to lay his head. They had to go through all the sufferings. They had to go through all the hiding. Go to God. They had to stay with him for that long, that lengthy period of time for those three years. But here comes Saul. Having a moment with God on the road to Damascus being sent with a measure of power and authority that did not take three years. Glory to God. And then the, the disciples and the apostles at that time began to get mad at Paul because they said Paul didn't see the Lord like us and that's what qualifies him. But Paul says something in the word. Paul said when it pleased the Lord. To separate me from my mother's womb. I conferred not with flesh and blood. That means I didn't even ask anyone's approval. I got on the fast track with God. Amen. And don't you know there's a level of submission that can hit your life where God will accelerate you 15 years in the future. And they'll say, how did they get there? How, how, how did he, how did he get on that stage? How did she get him on that platform? Where did these resources come from? Why did they choose him over this person, glory to God? Because I found myself submitted to Christ again. Precious people, get that in your heart and in your mind that I've got to submit myself to the Lord again. I've got to repent. I've got to go to God, get washed. I go to God. Through, the Bible says through the washing of the word, through the washing of the blood. I've got to ask God, purge out anything that is stopping me from submitting to your will. I am tired of acting as though I know the way this life's going to go. Don't you know you don't know? Praise God the way this life is going to go. You can't even measure what tomorrow is going to happen tomorrow. But when you're submitted to God, there is a God that can guide your life. Amen. There's a God that can deliver your feet from the strap and the snare of the fowler. There's a God that can do that. But it has to come with a level of submission to God and his word. How submitted is your life? How submitted are you to the call of God? I'm not even in the word yet. How submitted are you to what God has been telling you to do? Is God having to talk to you over and over and over and over and over again, trying to convince you to do his will? Guess what, beloved of God? Whenever you find, whenever God finds that you are rebellious against the word of God, let me show you what, what sin is and let me show you what iniquity is. Sin is anything that goes against the will of God. But let me show you what iniquity is. Iniquity is a continual rebellion against the will of God for your life. Y'all listen. That's what iniquity is. See, you're caught up on what sin, praise God, and you think you've got the sin, make the sin issue down packed. But sometimes you could you could have the sin issue down packed, but still be an iniquity. Because iniquity is continually rebelling against what God wants you to do. And whenever you are consistent in iniquity, what God will do is God will lift up that metron of grace off of you and put it on someone because the agenda of God will never be stopped. Praise the Lamb of God. Let me submit something to you. I don't mean to make you mad or, or make you think real hard. But if Mary had rebelled against the will of God, that assignment would have gone to another virgin. Y'all ain't talking. None of us are going to God. That's special where God would hold back his will for the earth because of you. Y'all ain't talking. God would have put that favor. 
brought, taken that favor off of Mary and put it on another virgin that would receive it. Glory to God. Now the call of God for your life is great. The chosenness of God for your life is mighty. But if you don't want it, and if you keep refusing it, God will let you live and be blessed, but he won't use you in that measure. He'll take that match on off of you, and he'll put that grace on another. Praise the Lamb of God. When Judas rebelled against the Lord and betrayed the Lord, the Bible says they went to pray. Y'all ain't talking. And the lot and the measure of grace that Judas had as an apostle of Lord Jesus Christ, God put that on someone else. Y'all ain't talking. God did not leave Judas' space empty. <laughs> Praise the Lamb of God. You think just because you're running from God, God's going to leave your assignment empty? If God has a measure of will for a territory and region, and if we don't want to rise up to do it, God will put this grace on somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will take that generational blessing off of your family, and he'll put it on a family that will obey him. Y'all ain't talking. The Bible said the only reason why God chose Abraham was because he knew that Abraham would teach his children after him. Glory to God. And there are many families right now that are going through, through cycles of generational damage and generational destruction because one mama and one daddy refuse to obey God. And the generations are suffering for it now. Somebody said that won't be my house. Glory to God. Joshua says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to submit to God. We're going to yield to God. And even if yielding to God sometimes puts us in uncomfortable situations, I would rather be uncomfortable with God than be comfortable outside of the will of God. The Bible says Moses was willing to suffer affliction with the people of Israel than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Praise God. So how submitted are you? Don't just hear this word. I want you to think about this word. How submitted am I to the call of God for my life? The chosenness of God for my life. The assignment of God for my life. It's not just about coming to church, precious people. Because you could be in the church and outside of the will of God. You could be singing the songs of Zion outside the will of God. You could be worshiping and thanking God and just, you know, enjoying the word and still be outside of the will of God. There is something that God wants you to do. I said there's something that God wants you to do. There's something that God wants you to do. You are not just supposed to come here and go where you go and sit on the seat and receive a good word and then go home, watch TV, go to work, come back to church, sit on the... There's something you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. And only a life and a relationship with Jesus is going to show you what that thing is. And a willingness to know. Some of us don't go in God's presence because we don't want to know. Because once we know, we understand that we're responsible for that level of information. So you're not going to fast. You're not going to stay in the presence of God. Because you know whenever you're in the presence of God, God's going to give you some directives. And sometimes those directives aren't what you want to do. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise God. Get in your notes. Ask your, put the question down there. How submitted am I? How submitted am I to what God wants me to do? Not what God wanted me to do yesterday or the last year. What about today? What about the future? What, what, what about next year and 10 years ahead? Am I submitted today for what God wants to reveal in my heart tomorrow? And see, sometimes God puts our life through, through, through a season of submission. Not for today, but for the larger thing he's going to ask us to do next year. Amen. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen. Think about that. Amen. Think about that. God makes you flexible today because he knows there's a day coming where he's going to ask you to do something. Yes. Yes. Hmm? He's going to ask you to do something. Oh, you thought, you thought today's call was just going to be it? No, no, no. God submits us and God causes us to be flexible because tomorrow, next year, he's going to ask you to do something and he needs you to get your heart prepared for it. He needs you to get your spirit prepared for it. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 8. One of the things that we said 
a couple of weeks ago was that if we can get God to start talking, that no circumstance, enemy, or thing will be able to stop us. I want to share a couple of things with you, and I want you to pay close attention. Never discount the voice of God. Never discount the voice of God. I want to say that again because I need you to get that. Never discount the voice of God. It is very easy, precious people, to put your confidence in the voice of man because you understand on this level of communication the power that man has. Bible says God is a spirit, so, so, so it's easier in this flesh because we're human beings to realize and recognize the power that man has. If they say they're going to do something, sometimes the enemy will cause you to fear because of what they say is going to happen, what they say is going on. All right. But you have to realize that we are in this world, but not of this world. There's a higher level of communication that we submit to. Are you getting that? So sometimes because we're in this human flesh, we start to discount the voice of God. God can be saying, oh, that won't happen. But when they say it's, hap it's going to happen, then you find yourself submitting to what man says instead of the voice of God. Never discount the voice of God. I want you to hold your place there in Deuteronomy because we're going to jump around a little bit. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, get this. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Is this good to you yet? Amen. He said, and the earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Pause. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, meaning it had no structure. And void, no fulfillment. And darkness, no light giving direction. This is something that God created, but it had no structure, no fulfillment, no light giving direction. Bible says, was upon the face of the deep. So what God literally does is, he let it look dark for a while until he decided to move. Never, let me, let, me, let me say it like this. Never assume what God is doing in the dark. Never assume what God is doing in the dark. Because darkness has many aspects. I want to take my time and, and talk to you about this. Darkness has many aspects, right? Darkness can be the, the, the uh, uh, darkness can be something that's preventing light, preventing movement, or it can be a strategy of God hiding movement. Hmm? Yeah. So darkness, being the absence of light, can prevent movement because if you're in a dark room, glory to God, sometimes it's hard to move because you don't want to injure yourself. But darkness pay attention to this, can also be the strategy of God hiding his movement. So whenever you find your life sometimes in a realm of darkness, you have to perceive and discern the purpose for the darkness. And I want to show you the, the word of God. Somebody says, show me. In Exodus chapter 12, verse number 29. God had told Moses, all right, I'm going to begin to do some things. Some things in Egypt. I'm going to begin to do some things to Pharaoh, some signs that will begin to cause Pharaoh to submit to my will and letting my people go. He begins to tell Moses, all right, I'm going to come in the dark. And I'm going to begin to smite the firstborn of Egypt. I want you to what? Sacrifice a lamb without blemish. Your most valuable possession. Put the blood of that lamb on the doorpost. Because at night I'm going to move throughout Egypt. So God literally, glory to God, plans his movement in the dark. Glory to God. 
executing what his will. Now I want, I want to show you this. He tells Moses, I'm going to move in the dark. Bible says when, when, when Pharaoh's firstborn and the firstborn of Egypt begins to die, glory to God, Pharaoh begins to inquire and calls for Moses. But God had already told Moses, I'm going to put so much favor on you. All right, you'll go to the Egyptians and you'll ask them of their gold and your, their silver because I, want, I don't want my people to leave Egypt empty. Watch this now. All right, so God moved in the dark. But his people had favor during the day. So sometimes the strategy of God is not to have the light on. Sometimes the strategy of God is to let it get dark so the enemy doesn't think anything's happening. But when the light comes on, then you're attached to another level of favor. Glory to God. They didn't get the favor until the light came. But what, what introduced them to the favor was the darkness. That's why you never discount uh, seasons of darkness. What did God tell, tell Solomon when Solomon built that temple? The Bible said the presence of God came in that temple so much that the priest couldn't even stand to minister. So the Lord says what? I dwell in the gross darkness. Glory to God. See, what we've allowed the enemy to do is steal the time and seasons from God. But whether it's night or whether it's day, the strategy of God for your life will never be stopped. What has God been doing during the dark that you've discounted his voice for? Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. So darkness has many aspects. It can be the absence of light preventing movement. Or it can be the strategy of God hiding movement. There are some military stealth operations that only happen at night. They have these, um, I forgot what they're called. These are uh, jets that are so technologically advanced that you can't even see them at night. They're hidden from radars. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And they, they don't even fly during the day. Their assignment is to fly in the pitch darkness. No lights on. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? There are no headlights on it. Glory to God. It's a military stealth operation. And I want to announce to you that God's been doing some stealth operations in your life. Glory to God. He's been doing some things without the lights on. Because see, anyone can rejoice when the light's on. But can you be settled in the dark knowing that there's some operations happening in the spirit realm that are beyond your sight? It is beyond the awareness of the flesh. Paul said, we look not at things that are seen. Glory to God. For the things that are seen are temporal. But we look at the things that are not seen, for the things that are not seen are eternal in the heavens. What the 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, and we know. But if this earthly house be dissolved, we've got another building of God that's not made by man's hands. When did he build it? He built it in the dark, outside of our sight. Praise the Lamb of God. So whether the lights are on or the lights are off, God is still moving for me. Are you getting this? All right. So, 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 so God moved at night, but in the morning the people had favor. God moved at night. But in the morning, the people had favor. So in Genesis 1 and 2, the Bible said, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And when the time was right, God said, I need to announce to you that God is not moved by your crying and your wallowing and your, I mean, your grievous you know, just begging God. God knows when the time is right. And the only thing we're supposed to do is position ourselves in the spirit of God and wait on him. See, because what prayer does is prayer builds up your spiritual fortitude so you're able to handle the seasons. Praise is the Lamb of God. God is trying to give you through prayer seasoned durability. 
Praise the Lamb of God. God is trying to give you season durability and people are trying to figure out how are they still standing with all of these things that have come up against them. Why? Because in the spirit realm, God's given me season durability. Because I understand that when the time is right, God's going to speak. What made God speak then? Think about it. After all of that time of the earth being without form and void and darkness being upon it, what made God speak then? When the earth hit the timing of God. The Bible said, and God said, what? Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God did what divided the light from darkness. See, many of you, because of your spiritual position now, God's about to put some separation between light and darkness in your life. You're about to cross over. Glory to God. Y'all, I'm preaching better than you're receiving. You're about to cross over that divide. But see, until you learn how to have peace in the dark places, glory to God, you won't be able to rejoice in the light. Praise the Lamb of God. That's why God can turn the light on in some people's life and they don't know what to do. They're kind of like a possum, praise God. A possum knows how to move in the dark, but when that light gets on them, they freeze. Are you understanding this? God's about to put your life across that divide. But it can only happen until you learn and understand that my times are in God's hands. Glory to God. The seasons are in God's hands. But what, what keeps me... What keeps me durable? What causes me to continue to endure my position in Christ? Amen. Praise God. So God moved at night, but in the morning the people had favor. In Judges chapter, chapter 7, the Bible said the Midianites had gathered themselves, had found people to help fight Gideon. Gideon blew his trumpet, 33,000. Was that right? 33 or 32,000 comes. Praise the Lamb of God. God tells Gideon, wait a minute, wait a minute, you got too many men. Now that, that goes against natural strategy. Because you want to have as many people fighting against the enemy as you could have. Praise the Lamb of God. God begins to tell Gideon, I need to cut this army down. Or tell the men who are fearful, go home. Glory to God. Then he gives another test. Glory to God. Find, bring them down to the water. Find the ones that, glory to God, bow their knees to drink it. And then find the ones that lap like dogs. Praise the Lamb of God. The ones that bow their knees, glory to God, not being watchful like a dog. Glory to God. Send them home. See, God needs people that are watchful. He needs people that are discerning the movements and the environments and the spirit realm around people of God. There are things happening in this spirit realm that if you're not in Christ, glory to God, it's going to take over your life. You've got to be discerning of what's around you because what's around you in the spirit realm is more than what's around you in this natural. Praise God. You've got warfare in the spirit realm. But in the spirit realm, you've also got reinforcements that you don't even know of. You've got an army surrounding you. The Bible says the angel of the Lord and camp about them that fear him. Praise the Lamb of God. Elijah had to pray, Elisha had to pray for the servant's eyes to be open so he wouldn't fear. So God cuts that army down. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God begins to give Gideon a divine strategy. He said, I want you to separate this army into three sections. I want, to put, I want you to position them at night. Position them at night. See, I'm trying to tell you, your positioning is happening now. Your position is happening when the enemy isn't aware of it. God is positioning you right now so that you'll be able to move when the day comes. Praise the Lamb of God. He, he separates that army into three sections. He says, I want you to carry a sword with you. I want you to carry a picture, a jar with you. And I also want you to carry a torch. Praise God. He said, don't do anything until I show you what to do. The Bible said, at the right time, 
The Bible says Gideon blew his trumpet. He broke the jar and then revealed the torch. It was, it was a sound of trumpet, praise God. It was the sound of breaking and then it was a sudden burst of light. Praise God. So when God tells us to shout, glory to God, it's a sound. Y'all ain't talking. It's a sound of the trumpet. It's the sound of breaking. Come on. Micah says the breaker is going before us. Y'all ain't talking. Praise God. And then it's what? A sudden burst of light. The Bible says at that combination of the sound of the trumpet, the breaking of the jar and the sudden burst of the light of the torches was so uh, uh, amplified by the Spirit of God that the enemies got confused. Y'all ain't talking. When you let God set up things during the night time at the right time, when that light comes, the enemies that formed against you are going to get confused and destroy themselves. See, I'm trying to teach you why you should position your life in submission now. Don't wait until things get better. Y'all ain't talking. Don't wait until you get the increase. Position yourself now so that when the light of Christ comes and he begins to divide the light from darkness, you'll be able to move. The Bible says... Glory to God, when the daytime comes, they find that all the enemies that have surrounded themselves around the armies of God were destroyed and they didn't have to spill one blood, one, 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 one measure of blood. They killed themselves. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? See, God moved at night, but in the morning the people had favor. So the first thing I told you to do is never discount the voice of God. The second thing I want to tell you is never upgrade the voice of a man. Never discount the voice of God and never upgrade the voice of man. The voice of man has no power over you unless authorized by God. Y'all talk to me. I said the, I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're the president of the bank, president of the United States. I hear the, the mayor of the city, all right, someone who seems spiritual, glory to God, uh, the voice of a man has no power over you unless authorized by God. Amen. When Balak, when Balak asked Balaam to go curse the people of God, what did, what would the Lord tell Balaam? No, 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 who, who I bless, no man can curse. I don't care. Now this was a king. This was a man of authority. But he still had to submit to the authority of God. Amen. Who's man that you're fearful of? Huh? I don't care if they say you can't get the approval for that house, or you can't give this, or you can't get that. Never upgrade the voice of a man and then run in the shadows talking about it's not going to happen for me. Who's God? Amen. So the voice of man has no power over you unless authorized by God. In Luke 10 and 19... I'm moving. He said, Behold, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you believe this? Amen. Now come on, we quote it all the time. We preach it all the time. But do you believe this? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Let me show you what an enemy of God looks like. Let me show you what an enemy of God looks like. So when we start to say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. You know, we say that, Father, rise and let your enemies be scattered. See, your, the, the, the enemies of God are, are not just people, you know, that don't like you. You know, because sometimes we can, we can miscategorize who our enemies are. Anytime we feel somebody don't like me. Oh God, bring my enemy down, Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lord, you said if you arise, your enemies... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let me show you what the enemy of God is. Do you remember when God, the, the, the Joshua, saw the angel of the Lord standing? Glory to God. 
They were on the time of the battle. And Joshua saw the angel of the Lord and Joshua asked the angel, who are you coming here to fight for? Praise God. You would have thought the angel would have said, I'm coming for you, Joshua. You're carrying my plan. You're carrying the legacy of Moses. I'm coming for you. That's not what the angel said. The angel said, I'm not coming for neither one of you. I'm coming for the cause of the Lord. See, what, what God categorizes as an enemy of His is anything or anyone that is continuing to fight His will and assignment for your life and the earth. Glory to God. An enemy of God isn't just someone that doesn't like you. They have to fight against the will of God for your life and the will of God for the earth. That's how you become an enemy of God. If you keep fighting against God's will for my life, you will become his enemy. When God is trying to push my life forward and accelerate his assignment, and when you continually come to throw roadblocks in the way of the assignment of God for my life, you become an enemy of God. Praise God. Because you don't have to like me, just don't try to stop me. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? They don't have to like you. They just can't try to stop you. Amen. Praise God. When you're doing the will of God, when you're a servant of God and you're submitted to God, and they try to stop that will from happening, they try to talk to people and throw roadblocks in the way, then they become an enemy of God, and then he arises and they become scattered. Amen. Hmm? So, 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 when he says here, Behold, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, he said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing is going to hurt you. Somebody said, Nothing is going to hurt me. Nothing, nothing is going to hurt me. Nothing is going to hurt me. Nothing is going to hurt me. Sometimes you need to say it a thousand times. Nothing is going to hurt me. If I believe Luke 10 and 19, I understand that nothing is going to hurt me. So I, 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 I never upgrade the voice of man. Never upgrade the voice of man. The Bible said in Exodus 5 and 1, that when Moses went up to Pharaoh, see this is why you have to understand, that the voice of man has no power over you unless authorized by God. Because if God didn't authorize Moses to go to Pharaoh, Moses would have died. But because Messiah, but because he was walking under the authorization of God, Pharaoh could have gotten mad but couldn't kill him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Pharaoh got mad, but Pharaoh couldn't kill him. You ever thought about that? Why didn't Pharaoh kill Moses the first time he went? Why, why didn't? Because Moses was walking under the authorization of God. Praise the Lamb of God. So as angry as Pharaoh got, he kept, he kept letting Moses go in and out, in and out, in and out, over and over and over again. After every plague, glory to God, in and out. Why can Pharaoh kill Moses after the first plague? The second one, the third. Because Moses was walking on the authorization of God. And precious people, I'm coming to tell you, glory to God, get your authorization from God. And then understand that if I'm walking under my authorization from God, nothing is going to hurt me. Praise the Lord, nothing. I feel Jesus here. Nothing's going to hurt you. Stay under your authorization by God. Nothing's going to hurt you. The voice of man has no power over you unless authorized by God. Because see, man sometimes has power, but power without authority can touch you. <laughs> I said power without authority can not touch you. Let me show you. Let me show you this. The President of the United States has power and authority in the jurisdiction that he rules. But if he gets on Air Force One and goes down to Uganda, they might respect him, but he has no power to change anything there. Y'all ain't talking because he don't have jurisdiction. Praise the Lamb of God. They'll respect him. Well, they're talking. They'll give him an audience, yeah. but he has no power to change their laws. Yeah. 
And see, what God wants you to understand is that man in this earth realm has a measure of power. But man cannot change anything. Lord God, concerning the plan I have for your life. Because I'm the one that has jurisdiction over you. Glory to God. God is the one that has jurisdiction over you. Just think about all the attacks and the plots. All the things that man has tried to do to stop his will from happening in your life. You are still here. Yes. Praise the Lamb of God. You are still kicking. You are still doing the will of God. Why? Because they might have power, but they don't have jurisdiction. The only word that is living over your life is the word of God. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. So power without authority cannot hurt you. So when God begins to say here in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give you power to trade upon servants and over all the power of the enemy. He said, I'm going to give you authority over power. I'm going to give you authority over power. Over man's ability. I'm going to give you that authority. Praise God. So you can have power, but no authority. I'm moving. Acts 19 and 13. I just miss y'all so much. I just have to give you as much as I can. Praise the Lamb of God. Acts 19 and 13. The Bible says, glory to God, that they were vagabond Jews, exorcists, the sons of Sceva. And they thought they would begin to, you know, cast up demons and devils like they saw. Like they saw other people. They thought that the power they had as being influential individuals... Glory to God, equated to power in the spirit. Lord have mercy. I, I'm going to have to take my seat after I say this. Glory to God. See, sometimes people who have power in the natural discount the authority that you have in the spirit. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. When I'm seated in Christ's right, glory to God, you might have the, the millions today, glory to God, but when I get settled in Christ, the only thing I've got to do is open my mouth. Hallelujah! Because you might have power in this earth realm in the natural, but it cannot trump the authority I have in Christ in the spirit. Praise the Lamb of God. See, you might have the resources, but I've got authority in the Spirit. Glory to God. That commands bodies to be healed. Praise the Lamb of God. That commands oppression to come up the lives of people. I'm talking about authority in the Spirit. And only the authority in the Spirit can do those things. What does Nicodemus say in John chapter 3? He comes to Jesus saying, Jesus... He says, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Except he has authority. And, uh, uh, except he has authority by God. No one can do it. And God is trying to put your life in a realm of authority where people will come to you and say, let me tell you something. I, I, I don't even know how that happened for you. And you'll be able to tell them, I've got power and authority. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, Bible says the demons begin to uh, 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 call out to them. And they said, uh, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Mm. All right. Uh, the Bible said the evil spirit leaped on them. Glory to God. And began to fight them. And they left out naked and wounded. Praise God. But I want to prophesy to you tonight and tell you that any enemy that's been fighting against you, God's about to let them leave out naked and wounded. Hallelujah. God is going to uncover the plot and then wound their assignment. Why? Because I have power and I have authority. Power and authority. Somebody say power and authority. See, power and authority belongs to God. And God lends it to us when we're submitted to his will. Why did I start this message and this teaching uh, of talking about submitting to the will of God? Because only a person that is submitted to Christ has power and authority. Amen. You have no authority unless you're submitted to Christ. Church, quiet now. Amen. 
Because we, we want to do the miracles, the signs and the wonders, but we're not submitted to Christ. You lose your authority when you're, you're not submitted to the one that gives it. Right. Praise the Lamb of God. Matthew, get these scriptures down. Matthew 28 and 18. Bible said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And because I'm seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, I've got that same power and that same authority. How many believe that? Amen. Colossians 1 and 16 says this. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Powers and rulers are under the authority of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 20. The Bible said, He exerted when he raised Christ from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, and authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. He said, far above all rule and authority. God has, God is far above all rule, all authority, all power, and dominion. That's why I said, never upgrade the voice of man. Because man's power is limited. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9. Get these down. Go study it later. He says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Huh? God gave him a name that's above every name. So any name that is attempting to block you or fight you, there's a name above that. Praise the, Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. I don't care what the doctors say. Praise the Lamb of God. There's a name above that. I don't care what the banking system says. There's a name above that. Praise God. I don't care what they say is going to happen. There's a name above it. Until God says it. Praise. I said until God says it. Until God says it. Praise God. There's a name that's above that. Psalm 75 and 6. He says, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. It is he that puts down one and sets up another. You see, even your promotion don't belong to man. Praise God. I don't care if they don't even like you. God will make them promote you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They'll do things in the... I don't even know why. I just don't... I don't even like that employee. Hallelujah. But when God promotes you, nothing can... Nothing can stop that promotion. Hmm? Amen. Never upgrade the voice of man. Now see, next week... Next week I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about observing to do the will of God. The word observe means to pay careful attention to the instructions of God. Careful, meticulous attention to what God wants you to do. We started out, I didn't even get to the scripture I asked you to go to at the beginning of the message, Deuteronomy 8 and 1. And we'll close there. He said, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may, number one, live. You'll never experience the abundant life that Jesus talks about until you observe to do his will. Do you understand that? There's so many uh, Christians and so many people that say they're following Christ. That are sad today because they're not living the abundant life. But there is no attention in them to what God is telling them to do. None. 
None. They're jumping over the instructions of God, trying to figure out why they're not being blessed. He said, observe to do that number one, you may live. Number two, you may multiply. And number three, you may possess. Why? He said, because I want to keep the word I gave to your forefathers. Hmm? I, I want to keep the word that I gave to your grandma and your grandfather. And somebody said, now, I don't even know my grandma and granddaddy was saved. I, I, don't, I don't even think they said any good things towards me. But don't you know there's a level of obedience a man or woman of God can do that will form a covenant with them with God. Praise God. See, you don't, see sometimes we're discounting prophecy. And we're saying, well, my mama was nasty and she, my grandmama, she didn't even like me. Praise God. But you don't realize that possibly 75 years ago, Christian grandma saw a preacher on the corner and stopped and fed that preacher. And by them doing something good for a man of God, God made grandma a promise. I'm going, I'm going to always prosper your grandkids. I'm going, y'all ain't talking. God knows how to form covenant. And that covenant lasts a thousand generations. You don't know. You don't know what triggered the covenant of God and the word of God over your life. That's why, glory to God, you never discount the ones that have come before you. Because you don't know. You don't know. That Shunammite woman did something good for Elisha and it glory to God resurrected her son. You don't know how God forms covenant with individuals. He said, you need to pay attention to what I'm calling you to do. Because number one, I want you to live. Number two, I want you to multiply. Number three, I want you to possess. Why? So I can keep my word that I told the ones that have come before you. You don't even have to know it. You don't even have to know it. You're experiencing some things right now because God made someone that came before you a covenant. Amen. 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 Someone said, Apostle, how do you know that? A a ask Mephibosheth. I'm, I'm done. I'll, I'll continue next week. Ask, ask Mephibosheth. Huh? Ask Mephibosheth. Because Mephibosheth was lame in Lodobar because the nurse that was carrying him. Y'all ain't talking. I can teach a whole lesson on that nurse. Praise God. Because Joshua, uh, uh, David, uh, uh, and Jonathan. Uh, had made a covenant one with another. David had told Jonathan, I'm always going to protect your seed. Are you understanding this? I'm not going to let anything hurt you. But the nurse didn't get the memo. So the nurse begins to run with Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was never under danger. As long as David was watching out. But the nurse drops Mephibosheth. He's now lame in Lodabar. Praise God. David, after a while, begins to search out, is there any of Jonathan's seed still alive? He finds, they say, well, there's one by the name of Mephibosheth. He's in Lodabar. He's lame, sitting at the wrong table. Don't you know God knows how to remember his covenant? Y'all yes, yes, yes. ain't talking. See, sometimes we're, we're, we're lame in some areas and at the wrong table sometime, and we're just thinking that's the end of it all. But don't you know God remembers his covenant? Yes. Amen. And they go search Mephibosheth out. He says, who, who, who am I? A dead dog that the king comes to me. What did David say? I made your daddy a promise. So when God says, I'm going to do all these things to keep my covenant that I swore to your fathers, you don't, he, Mephibosheth didn't even know there was a covenant made. Lord, have mercy. He didn't even know that there was a covenant made, but the covenant came and found him. And I want to prophesy to you as we go, we're going. I want to prophesy to you. You just have to receive this. Whatever covenant, lift your hands. Whatever covenant God made to prosper me, it's going to find me. Whatever covenant God made, glory to God, to heal me, it's going to find me. 
Whatever covenant God made to prosper, to multiply, that I might live the abundant life, it will find me. Praise God. And transport me to the right table. I'm not a Messiah. Transport me to the right table. Come on, see yourself moving from the table where you are to a higher table. A higher table of covenant. I don't care what the voice of man has said. The covenant of God is about to find you in measures you have never imagined. The promises of God for your life. They are yes. And they are amen.